Hello everyone, welcome to Rural Water Resources Management and PTL course. This is week 9, lecture 3. In this week, we are looking at engineered structures that can help in rural water resource management. We found that in the previous week, a lot of water is wasted, a lot of water is not captured and management is lacking. So how can we increase these aspects? There is natural based waste and engineering based waste. In this week, we are looking at engineering based methods to improve rural water resources. In the last lecture, we looked at dams and check dams. Now we will continue to see how different models exist with check dams. A series of check dams can also be built. In the previous um, lecture, I showed you how one check dam is there, water comes, gets stored, and then the recharge happens. But there can be also cascading effect, which means you can have one after the one after the other, very strategically placed to have a cascading effect. Let's see how that looks. So this is a single check dam. And the check dam can have a kind of a water area that it is storing. So it also looks like a tank. Okay, a tank should be all sides closed. But here you could imagine that water is coming and filling a tank, and then it goes to another tank, another tank, or one dam goes to another dam, goes to another dam. So that is what is called a cascading dam. This involves many small dams in along the same <coughs> river or stream network. And after one fills, the other one fills. So hereby, uh, you're not letting the water go escape out of the watershed, especially into the oceans and, and big rivers where uh, the volume doesn't matter for the big river and ocean, but it does matter for the local public, okay? So as I said, if water flows out, it is a loss to the watershed. And this is very important when the watershed is leaving the water into a bigger water body, uh, especially large rivers and oceans. So it is okay to store the water as a cascading effect. And when you have the cascading effect, many important parameters get recharged. Let's look at some. Slowing down surface runoff. So the major first goal is you slow down the surface runoff. The water that flows on the top um, after you have a precipitation and infiltration, etc. The water which flows on top of the surface continues to flow along with other water um, uh, runoff and then forms into rivers and uh, streams, right? So this is being slowed down because of these check dams. You are slowing down the water increase in water release to the streams. Uh, you are <coughs> slowing down, thereby not letting the water escape the system, but slowly releasing the water into the streams. So for example, this is your stream. If runoff was coming very fast, it would escape the stream network and go. So in three months, all the flow is gone. However, if you stop it at periodic intervals, the water gets only slowly, slowly released in the stream, thereby increasing the longevity or the longevity of the stream. Most importantly, it lets into recharge, base flow, groundwater, uh, aquifer recharge, etc. And those water would come back to the stream as river flow through base flow which actually increases the flowing period of the stream. It increases groundwater recharge and sustains base flow. So this is what I mean as once the water goes in to the ground and then goes out as base flow, the stream gets more water. Let's have a quick diagram of how it works. Okay, so you have your stream and along the stream, you have check dams, okay? 
So if the check dams were not present, water would just flow out fast. Because you have the check dam, the water would go into the ground and then come back out, into the ground and then come back out. This causes a delay in the water leaving the stream, okay? Thereby, the going in is called recharge and then coming out to the stream is called base flow contribution. So by this process, what going into the ground and coming out, you are slowing the flow of the water in the stream, thereby increasing the period over which the stream flows. For example, if the stream was flowing like this, just four or five months, because it went into recharge and comes out at base flow, it will flow like this. Okay, So all throughout the year, you would see <coughs> groundwater flow. Isn't this the way the initially all the water bodies were? Yes. Initially, all the water bodies would be flowing uh, every, the major water bodies, the rivers, streams will be flowing throughout the year. You would have heard stories from your grandparents or even your parents that some of these uh, water bodies, rivers, streams were having water throughout the year, but now it is not happening. So there is a series of check dams can be built to increase the water in the stream. That is one method that um, uh, a lot of studies have promoted and especially one person has done a lot of these works in Rajasthan, Mr. Rajendra Singh, and he was awarded the Stockholm Water uh, Prize, which is considered as the Nobel Prize for Water, uh, kind of that high, highly regarded prize for creating these check series of check dams to revive, revitalize the streams and rivers. He woke up a lot of people to get into these series of check dams, and many, many rivers and streams have been benefited. However, so here's where I'm going to stop with the engineered aspect for rural water management for surface water, because um, you can do only less amount of surface water uh, interventions. It is not that easy to make multiple interventions. For example, you cannot cut a channel and then bring the water out to your uh, house and stuff, which is not allowed in many, many aspects, <coughs> right? You can put a pump and take it as lift irrigation. Uh, even that is not allowed in a canal system. So think about all these regulations and that is where uh, people uh, have been not much abusing the rivers, water bodies, etc. But where most of the abuse is happening is in the groundwater for rural systems. India is the chief groundwater extractor and there is a big need to conserve that resource. Let's see how you could do groundwater uh, recharge activities in rural villages. So since it is not natural based, it is called artificial recharge techniques. If it is nature based, it is like forest uh, and then you have more um, infiltrated soil, percolated soil where you have multiple <coughs> nature based solutions to increase the recharge. However, the speed is still low. So for that, there is a lot of artificial recharge techniques, which involves a lot of engineering aspects. Let us look at some of them in this class today. So first, artificial recharge techniques are divided into direct and indirect methods. In the direct method, you have sp surface spreading techniques where you increase the time of the water in connection with the land. Okay, So if water is flowing very fast on land, then there is the time of connection between the water, the connect, you know, between the water and the stream is very less, the water in the land body. And that causes less infiltration time, less percolation time thereby less groundwater. So how can you increase this connection between contact between the water and the land, the contact time? You could increase that by flooding. You flood the area, let the water pond up. Okay, A thickness of water is on the land and that time 
is given to the land to infiltrate the water and take it to the groundwater. Multiple methods are there. Others are basins or percolation tanks, stream augmentation, ditch and furrow system. We have seen this in the previous uh, lecture also the ditch and furrow system, but here we will look at it, how it is in the groundwater network. In the subsurface, we have the recharge well, the recharge pit shaft and the dug well, where most of these are wells and those wells have to be built inside the ground, whereas the surface techniques are on top of the ground. Subsurface techniques are you have to dig and then put it in for the action to be taking place. The indirect is induced recharge, which is mostly by pumping uh, water into it which is not a very um, commonly used method. So we will focus on the direct method. There are a lot of schemes versus methods. So these are the techniques which I've shown here, sometimes cannot stand alone because um, the problem is complex. Groundwater recharge is complex. So let's look at some schemes where they take <laughs> multiple <laughs> methods and then work on the net groundwater recharge. The first one is the Ganges water machine, which is um, a thesis, uh, as I mentioned, from a Indian student at MIT Stanford, Harvard, where they worked on these topics um, for inducing groundwater recharge along the Ganges was a very old thesis and now a lot of people are working on it. There's a book by Anthony in 2015 on this uh, Gans water machine. Uh, please see if you could um, look at it and what um, they talk about. I will give you some examples of what it is. What does Ganges water machine mean for groundwater? Okay, uh, The Ganges um, has a lot of water as surface water. But in recent years, along the Ganges, the rural areas, the groundwater has been depleting. So what the Ganges water machine concept thinks about is, if you pump along the Ganges before the monsoon, okay, along means along the riverbed, uh, where you can put up a big <coughs> pump and pull out the water. Okay, If you take the water out before the monsoon, which is the time when you need more water for uh, uh, irrigation and agriculture, right? So if you take the water before the monsoon, then what happens is when a big flood of water comes like in the Ganges during the monsoon, then there is space for the water to recharge, which can be taken out later, okay? So I'm going to draw how it should look like. So you have a land, okay? And what they're asking, uh, claiming to do is uh, you pump before the monsoon, you take out the uh, aquifer uh, volume out. So basically you empty the aquifer and when water starts to flow in the monsoon, so when water flows, it goes inside and recharges. Thereby the water level might come down in the Ganges, which means the floods might come down Still, all of this is a thesis, a theory. So there's a lot of um, experimental uh, methods that needs to be done <coughs> to prove it. Um, but what I'm trying to tell you is, by these methods, you can actually recharge as per the science and the book, which has explained. So you pump before the monsoon along the Ganges. And then you have recharge of water in the riverbed. Okay, so basically the flood comes in the monsoon, it goes into the uh, riverbed and recharges the uh, soil. So even if you pull it out in before the monsoon, the water, it doesn't affect the groundwater <coughs> use because you are actually recharging it every year. Convert the riverbed as a groundwater storage. So initially the riverbed is always full of groundwater because no one is putting a pump and taking the water. No one is actually uh, using the underground of the riverbed uh, where there is good aquifer storage. 
mostly only the river is used and the banks of the river where the groundwater is there they use it so the river bed <coughs> sometimes is mostly less affected and that is where the study is saying use the river bed to take water out uh, and use during post monsoon season where uh, you can recharge the groundwater in the monsoon and then post monsoon you can take it out and use it thereby emptying the space again so it is a machine so you are oh, uh, converting the ganges riverbed into a machine where water comes you recharge it and then the flood is uh, reduced but then after the water flood season is gone you take the water and use it for agriculture keep the water uh, aquifer empty another uh, annual river water comes and goes in so it, it keeps continuing like a cycle however so these are the benefits let's look at the practical um, problems that is why i am saying it still needs a lot of testing the energy consumption is intensive lot of energy is needed to take water out of the river bed and then where to use it how to spread the water out is a concern please understand that the ganges river bed and ganges area already has a lot of water resources so why would someone put energy <coughs> and pump and then use it for agriculture is a question so all these still have to be debated but a lot of big agencies are working on it uh, as example imi which has a lot of funds from big banks to work and test this system because once they test it uh, they can actually uh use it for a uh, groundwater recharge and taming of floods which is what this second um theme that we are going to look at or the scheme in this scheme you see underground taming of floods for irrigation utfi so you are having the flood water coming on the surface which is washing away the rural areas and stuff not much uh, agricultural benefit it is not stored in the aquifer so there is a lot of loss of the flood water what this scheme does if you look at it this is the wet season or the monsoon season without utfi scheme in in without the utfi scheme there is a rain all the water comes as runoff it goes into the rivers and streams and floods the cities and rural villages whereas in utfi what happens is there are these long shaft groundwater recharge shaft where water is stored in these small small recharge ponds and pushed into the groundwater through the recharge shaft thereby increasing your groundwater recharge now your flood volume is much much attenuated in the streams and rivers before the city and also the rural villages more importantly your water can be used in the dry season which is the next season you could see that groundwater is being pumped and agricultural activities are happening so this is with utfi so all utfi does is it captures your uh, monsoon rainfall prevents the floods pushes the flood water into or before even the flood happens because you are capturing the water before the flood happens and pushing it into the groundwater storage through recharge shafts <clears throat> and this water is available in the dry season for agricultural activities during wet season floods can develop due to less groundwater infiltration also because of the soil is is very wet uh, and so the infiltration is very slow however if you have this long recharge shaft i'll show you the figures of how a recharge shaft looks like it's an engineered uh, product where you could push water into the recharge shaft faster and thereby actually not in the shallow aquifer it goes directly to the deep aquifer so there is a lot of volume which has already been depleted by rural uh, activities especially agriculture so what the scheme says is already the groundwater is depleted why don't you take the flood water push it inside and then use it for post um, monsoon activities again these are still being tested for recharge rates water quality quantity etc and once they get tested and um, scientifically validated then 
big uh, schemes can be implemented in India. So this study has also been tested in India where there's a lot of engineering aspects, uh, artificial as uh, engineered products to enhance the groundwater. Even groundwater is low, the water cannot infiltrate rapidly to lower floods because floods happen at a very fast stage, a speed, whereas <coughs> the infiltration is a much slower process. That is where UTFI smartly enables shafts to augment natural recharge rates. Augment means add on or fasten the natural recharge rate. Let's look at how it's done. Okay. So you have here the recharge shaft, as I mentioned, and you have a, a canal where the water is flowing, canal, stream, uh, or river network. Water is being shunted into a renovated pond. Initially, all this area does not have groundwater because the groundwater is very deep. Uh, not, nothing is growing. The villages are not having water for agriculture. The pond has no water because of climate extreme uh, and nothing is growing um, along the banks of the pond. So it's just wasted water resource and water body. Look at how deep the groundwater is. So now what they claim is if the canal water is there and this canal has nothing to do with the pond. There's no, no recharge happening. So now what UTFI scheme does is take the canal water, <coughs> divert it into the pond, part of it, not all canal water is lost, only part of it. So there is first a diversion of water and that water is put into these recharge shaft. You can see the recharge shaft and groundwater goes faster, much faster into the shaft and to the deep, deep aquifer. So you could see that the deep aquifer is getting all the water which then recharges the entire aquifer. So from here, it has gone up to here during the uh, UTFI scheme. <coughs> ponds are dug and fit with deep shafts. So the ponds, getting the pond land is a, is a, a concern, but if you already have a river um, um, and a pond nearby, uh, then you can easily uh, talk to the villagers and see how this scheme can work. That is how they have done a testing site in the Ganges. Uh, they have identified a farm pond which has not had water. They have said, okay, let's take some canal water through permission and put it in the pond. If you just leave it in the pond, the recharge rate is slow. So to augment it, to increase that, these recharge shafts have been built, engineered. So basically they are a column which goes into the deep aquifer and water is being pushed in to these recharge shafts to go faster and then recharge. So you could see the faster recharge is happening compared to the recharge here from the pond. These can connect to the deep aquifers rapidly than through the soil matrix because if water has to go through the soil, it is very slow process. What they do is they put gravel and other layers of uh, soil and rock in the recharge shaft, put the water on it so that the water moves slowly and all the impurities are kept on the top, then water just goes faster into the pipe. So this pipe, there's no soil, so water can just go faster. Once it goes faster, it recharges the deep aquifer, thus increasing infiltration and percolation rate. To be honest, there is no uh, percolation uh, rate needed because the infiltration just takes the water straight to the deep aquifers. You are bypassing the percolation path. This can reduce flood because you're quickly catching the flood water and putting it in, thereby reducing the flood peak. And more importantly, you're also recharging the groundwater. And this is where two aspects have been satisfied because when floods come, your rural uh, agriculture is gone, right? A lot of fields have been washed away. Too much water is also bad. So you're capturing the water, putting it into the groundwater and recharging. And after the flood, after the flood season, this water can be pumped through the uh, deep aquifer pumps and used for agriculture. As I said, this has been tested widely um, and still the results are coming. Uh, just recently, last year, we have uh, papers. So look at the uh, wet season without UTFI and wet season with UTFI. You don't have groundwater recharge here. There's a good groundwater recharge. And most importantly, the flood level has reduced.
how does it look plan view um, uh, with UTFI is you have these recharge uh, ponds and around the recharge ponds or inside the recharge ponds, you have the recharge shaft, which actually pushes water faster into the groundwater. And during the dry season, this groundwater is being tapped for agriculture. So it reduces the floods, uh, protects the rural villages, assess livelihoods uh, from flood damage and groundwater recharge happens distributed upstream recharge of excess flood water to aquifers water is pushed into these <coughs> because when the pond level rises for example now the pond doesn't have water but when water comes the pond level rises and can go into the brown space you can see here which has layers of materials that can remove the impurities or filter the impurities and the water cleaner water can go into the aquifer this aquifer water can be used to boost irrigation during the dry flow season or the non-monsoon season. Better access to groundwater and increase agricultural production and livelihood improvement. So this is a win-win for everyone. But this is only the schemes that I've been talking about. Now we will look at some of the methods. I will introduce the book. Please go through the book. It is a free open source book. I will discuss more about the methods in the next class. Okay, so the book is called Manage Aquifer Recharge, where uh, groundwater recharge is slow. There needs to be methods to improve or increase the infiltration. And that has been widely used uh, by Manage Aquifer Recharge Activities, which is called MAR, where you manage um, your aquifer uh, through uh, artificial means and your recharge happens. Okay, so engineer or natural activities that are done to increase groundwater recharge rate. The uh, natural activities I would discuss in the next week. In this week, I would focus on the engineered aspects. The book by uh, Gale, 2005, captures methods uh, for rural India because there's a lot of examples from rural India, especially in semi-arid areas where rainfall is lesser than 750 millimeters or rainfall is only concentrated in a particular month, months, monsoon months. So what happens is you are capturing the rainfall, you are storing the water in particular methods to recharge locally in the aquifer. As I said, the book is free and open source. It looks like this. Uh, please go ahead and download and uh, read it for better understanding about manage aquifer recharge in semi-arid areas. Because if it's totally dry, there's no rainfall to capture and put in the aquifer. So there's already a, a loss. But in a semi-arid, you have some rainfall. Let's not waste the rainfall, capture it and put it in the groundwater is the concept. So I hope to see you in the uh, next class with some models and interesting aspects and how to test this in the field. I will see you in the next class. Thank you.